welcome to class time. I do hope that you all are having a great night. Now, back on Monday night, we discussed what was called experimental probability. Tonight, we're going to continue to expand that understanding. You'll know, remember yesterday, Tuesday night, you also had a very similar lesson where we made predictions using experimental probability. Well, tonight, we're going to expand that knowledge. All right, so tonight, we're actually going to be conducting some math experiments to see about the probability of certain events. Tonight's lesson is all about tools. So it would be helpful to get out dice if you have them or something like that. Uh, either you make a dice or maybe you got one from my class today. That would be helpful to get that out so you can follow along and, and make sure you can do this right. So, um, now to do this lesson, the, the best way to do it is actually go ahead and get your book out, open to page 563. That's this right here, page 563. Um, I thought about putting it on the screen and then decided against it because it was a pretty in-depth problem. So once again, go and open your books to page 563, and let's go ahead and work this out. Let's go ahead and read this through, and then I'm going to explain this, and then we'll go ahead and practice one specific problem, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So this is on page 563. Now we're going to be talking about simulations. Now right here you see a simulation of a real-world situation is a model used to find experimental probability. So we're going to be doing something that is going to help us find experimental probabilities. All right, you can use cubes, spinners, and computers to model real-life situations. Now in this first example, we're going to be using a, well, we're not going to be, the book decided to use a spinner. Uh, most of us, including I, don't have spinners uh, like the ones they want you to use. Uh, but with the next problem, we're going to use dice, so it would be helpful to get dice out. All right, so let's go ahead and read this problem very quickly. All right, so it says, newspaper delivery each day, Sue delivers Mrs. Rivers' newspaper sometimes between 6.30 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. Mrs. Rivers leaves for work between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. What is the probability that Mrs. Rivers will get her paper before she leaves for work? Now I'll go ahead and pause right here because that seems somewhat complicated. Okay, but as you look through it, you can probably think of, wow, it's going to take some really deep math thing. Well, it's not actually. It's actually going to be pretty simple because all you see, and on the next page we're going to see, all they do is use a spinner and see what happens. They basically create a random situation. All right, so let's go and talk about that very quickly. All right, so go ahead and turn your page. So turn page 564, so just the next page over, and let's see how they solve this, okay? So the very top, plan and solve. Now, you, we can't collect data from Sue and Miss Rivers, because first of all, they don't exist. We can't walk up, talk to them, and say, all right, so when did you get there this day? No, we can't do that. So we're going to simulate the problem with a model. Now what they did is they actually used two spinners. You see these two spinners right here. One spinner was for Sue's delivery time. So you see at the very top it goes from 6.30 to 7.30. And all those times are marked. And then the time Mrs. Rivers goes to work, another 7 to 8. And they have all those times in between. So all they're going to do is basically flip those spinners for, and you can see, for 28 times. So right here, there's, in this chart right here, there's 28 different dates, okay? Basically, they just flipped each splinter and then recorded the data, okay? So right here, so spin each spinner wants to simulate what might happen on a given day. The table below shows results for 28 days. For each day, circle the earlier time. If time one is circled, Mrs. Rivers gets her paper. All right, so what they did is they simply flipped the spinner and then recorded the times. Okay, so time one is 7.03 and then time two is 7.55. So the earlier time, circle that one. Now you see that all they went through. Now if the earlier time was circled, so if, if um, Sue got there before 8 o'clock, then Mrs. Rivers got her note, got her newspaper. If she didn't, she did not get her newspaper, okay? So we see right here on this particular day, Mrs. Rivers left at 7.06 and Sue delivered at 7.24. So that day she did not get her paper. But we see many, many other days she did get her paper. Now, we read here, in the 30 simulations, Mrs. Rivers received her paper before leaving for work 26 times. So P, the probability of getting the paper before work, equals 26 
over 30. Remember, that's experimental probability right there. Number of times over the total number of trials, and that makes, excuse me, that makes it about 87%. Move it up here. All right, so then look back and check. Now, this table summarizes each delivery time, okay? And so we see that right there. Now, the table shows that it is more likely that she will receive her paper. Since P, the probability of paper before work, is 26 thirtieths, or about 87%, the answer is reasonable. Meaning, if you have about an 87% chance of winning something or, or, or getting the probability, then that's, that's a high probability. You're most likely going to be happening. That's most likely going to be happening. All right, so that is their example. I, I'm not a big fan of their example. It is a little bit complex, I feel. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one other one. Now, the one in the book they use spinners. Most of you and I don't even have spinners. So what we're going to be doing is a little bit different one. Now this is example two, or sorry, the check understanding on page 564. This is the bottom here, page, uh, page 564. All right, now I did go ahead and put this one on the board because we're actually going to do this one together. Let's go ahead and read this. It says, the forecast calls for a two-thirds chance of rain in Detroit and a one-half chance of rain, or one-half chance in Tampa. Find the experimental probability that it rains in both cities. Use, number, use two number cubes, so you see right here, I actually have some pretty cool dice already set up that I can roll, it's kind of cool actually. So we're gonna use the two number cubes. Now one, two, three, and four on one cube represent rain in Detroit. Now remember right here, a two thirds chance of rain. Two thirds is the same as four sixths, and so we chose four numbers on the first cube. And then one, two, and three on the other cube represent rain in Tampa. Now remember, Tampa has about a half, uh, one half chance of rain, and one half is the same thing as three six. And so you see, I have three numbers here. So what I'm going to do is simply roll the dice, and I'm going to record the numbers on each of these lines. As I record the numbers, if I get a one, two, three, or four and a one, two, three, that means it's rain on both days and I'll circle those, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and practice that. It's blue for this. All right, so my first time, we'll go ahead and roll this. There we go, roll both those dice. All right, so I have a five and I have a three. Well, there's no rain in Detroit on this day. Next time. All right, so there's two and this is a, Three. Look at that. There is rain because that's a it has a two and three. So we're good on that day. All right. So let's go keep, keep going. All right. So one and four. So that means there's no rain on that day. Two and four. So there is rain on that day. Four and three, there is rain on that day. So I'll circle that one. Now, don't worry, I'm actually going to pause and we get two more done, and then I'll actually finish it up by myself, and then I'll kind of bring you guys back into the video. So there's a six and a three, so that means there's no rain on that day. And the last one we'll do, at least in the video, is going to be three, and that's going to be a two, so there is going to be rain on that day. All right, so I'm going to pause the video real quick. I'm going to finish up the example, and then I'll bring you back in when I get the example done. Okay? All right, welcome back. You see I've actually filled in the vast majority of the chart. Well, I was going to say the last one so we can do it together. All right, so my last part of this chart, I'm going to roll both my dice, and it's one and two. And there we go. So one and two, I do it in circle that. I do want to point out now, I, I noticed I actually made a mistake right here, so I fixed that. Uh, There's no rain on that day because a two of four in Tampa does not work. Okay? Alright, so this is our chart. This is our data. So now there are 28 times. So what I'm going to do is find the experimental probability out of a total of 28 times. So I have one time, so it rains this day, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. So it rained 13 out of 28 times. It rained 13 out of 28 times. So that would be my experimental probability. 13, let me 
actually make that look a little better. There we go. That's a little better. All right, so it ran 13 out of 20 times. So that is my experimental probability. So you see, this lesson is all about the work. Okay, you have to do the work. You either have to use dice or a spinner or something like that to, to simulate the problem and then record the results and then determine the probability, the experimental probability of that option. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that is the lesson. Simply make sure you do the work. Okay, that, that's basically all they're expecting you to do. This wasn't difficult. It took a little thought power to kind of set up the problem. But once you get the work done, it's actually very, very easy. You can roll dice and record numbers and record the experimental probability. That's, that's all you have to do. I will go ahead and say, if you were to do the exact same problem, you would probably get similar, but not the exact same answers. You get similar, but not the same answers. And that's okay, okay? Because it says probability once again. Remember, probability is not exact what's happening. All right, so your homework tonight is going to be page 565, 2 through 4. Once again, page 565, 2 through 4. Have a great night, and we will see you all in the morning.